Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Welcome to the First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's first contact with Joshua Bowen. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. He'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. He'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First contact it's time. radio. We it's have time to demand the truth. truth. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. Glad you could be here. Today is the 28th of October. Only a few more days left to go till we hit the next month. Halloween's on Friday. Today we have a moon sign making a transition, or it did make a transition, from Sagittarius into Capricorn. Capricorn is a Earth sign. So we go from the fire sign, which fire moves around, to Earth, which is stable, practical, the physical world. But we're taught an important lesson with Capricorn, because Capricorn is represented by the tarot card of the devil, and that is to look past the physical world, because the physical world is just an illusion. Enjoy the physical world, but don't get caught up in it because it's not the be-all and end-all of everything. It also deals with career because it's the physical world, things we do in the physical world, work-related. Uh, 7.45 a.m., we had a conjunction, so Mars is in the mix with Capricorn, giving it that little extra boost of energy. This afternoon, Neptune is going to be in a sextile it's a good positive vibe energy here with the uh, Capricorn so it's going to be challenging to look in, an, in a new perspective the things of the physical world maybe our career look at how we're doing things career related work related this afternoon the uh, Sun and the moon Scorpio Sun and Capricorn moon are going to be in aspect with each other so that transformative energy of Scorpio and the energy of the practical energy of Capricorn are going to be working together allowing us to be able to uh, make some good progress in our change that is what we're working towards and then later this afternoon, Venus gets in the mix with Capricorn, bringing some imagination into the whole process that is taking place. Numerology for today is the number nine. Here's how we've arrived at the number nine. Two plus zero plus one, plus two plus eight, plus two plus zero plus one plus four all add up to 18. One plus eight equals nine. Number nine is the path of the hermit. We've seen this many, many, many a times. So we have the numerology for today. The sun sign right here. And the moon sign, which is right here. So we've got this little inner spoke taking place. All right, now which one of the tarot do we want to look at today? Let's look at number 18, the moon. The moon. Okay. This is important. This is when we add up all the numbers for the day, what it comes to before we reduce down to 9. It's the 18. 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 8 plus 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 4. So it's called the corporal intelligence. It means body consciousness, indicative that the illumination is dependent upon bodily states. Until the bodily organs are evolved to the extent that higher forms of consciousness can manifest through them, it is impossible to experience such conscious states. 
Sleep is also attributed to this key and is during sleep that our aspirations and efforts are built into our organic structure. Every thought we think and every action has some modifying influence on bodily structure. It is said that the way of attainment is the way of return. This is symbolized by the moon, which reflects the rays of the sun back into the sun. The crawfish represents instinct, instinctive energy. The wolf and the dog represent the same energy, but in a higher form as a result of evolutionary modification. Also, the wolf is a symbol of nature and the dog of art because he is a product of human adaptation. The path passes between the two extremes because the way of balance goes neither too far towards artificiality nor allows everything to be influenced by ungoverned natural impulses. The path leads through the well-tilled field to the unknown heights beyond the two towers representing present human attainments. The ground is auditory representing alternate periods of rest and action. The stage of unfoldment is organization. Hebrew letter Kof, back of the head, Pisces, water sign. It's about having faith. It's about going into the unknown, having faith, knowing that the light that shines, even though we don't see it in its fullness as the sun, is reflected by the moon to let us know that that light still exists. So we move forward with faith, knowing that the light will always shine upon us. The current moon phase, 24% of the way full, making its way up to a full moon. In the sky, the signs tonight, when we look up there, it says us evening Mars is below the moon at nightfall. So we got the moon here and Mars down here. So looking forward to tonight. The Mayan Oracle, we are a 12-tone day. It's called the Crystal Tone of Cooperation. So today is the Crystal Night guided by the Eagle. Eagle's vision, the night's dreams in abundance. I dedicate in order to dream universal, universalizing intuition. I seal the input of abundance with the Crystal Tone of Cooperation. I am guided by the power of vision. Space weather, solar wind, 428.6 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is between a 3 and a 4. We do have some activity but no notifications of any solar wind coming our way. M class flares up to 85 percent chance, X class to 55. Geomagnetic storm activity is dropped down in the middle latitudes to only 15 and 25 in the high latitudes. So we're paying attention on whether or not we have any activity today. And here on the Jewish calendar Today we are right here for Cheshwan. For Cheshwan. And the daily thought for today no repeats. If you are serving the same God today as you served yesterday, whom are you serving but yourself? Can God be frozen and defined? Does he get older with each day? Does it eventually then become a relic of the past? Where there is love and where there is awe, each day brings a new discovery of wonder. There you go. That gets us started for today. UFO News is up next. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Let's get to it. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. Dirk, thank you very much. First sighting takes us up to Mars. So when you look at that picture, what do you see? Looks like somebody walking, perhaps. Get a further glimpse of it here. And there's some more objects that are found up there. Interesting indeed. This week I found some interesting anomalies in the Mars photo. This shows a close-up of a crater Fram. In this photo there are unusual objects including a walking figure. The figure is upright and we can even make out a head, neck, and shoulders. We can even see the feet which appears large in proportion to the figure itself. The figure is very short, just over a foot tall if we use the Mars Curiosity rover's tracks as a measure of comparison. There are also several faces that show a lion-like species that once existed and may have come from their cultural mythology. There 
Very interesting. I also noticed one ancient man vessel at the edge of the crater. The small ship has a large smiling face and the nose. There's a flipper like front and back wings. Even pilot's cockpit that is open. The size of this cockpit and the spacecraft indicates the walking figure we saw came from this alien craft. Interesting. Interesting, huh? Alright, let's check that out. Next, we're going to go to Volcano Popocopital. Another object seen above it. Taking a close look at YouTube videos. Capturing the same event this week, this UFO is documented by both Anatoth and Color UFO of YouTube. They saw this UFO on live cam. It looks silver metallic and then turns to glowing red. Also behind it, the UFO is making a contrail, or it could be the smoke from the volcano that the UFO is pulling behind it. Every week, UFOs are often caught near the mouth of this volcano. Also note that this volcano is active and dangerous. There is a cliff at its mouth and falls some 200 feet, meters straight down, so no human could enter. All right, and the link is available at First Contact Radio. You see the link to this webcam, so maybe you can check out and find some on your own. Here we have a story that says a driver gets in a close look at an amazing UFO that disappears in a bright flash. At dusk, Early Tuesday morning, October 7th, Chad was northbound on Missouri 13 and he had reached a point just north of Osilio when he came aware of two things simultaneously. A car pulled off the shoulder with its flashers on and a large dark bulk hanging motionless in the air that appeared to be almost directly above it, less than 100 feet above the ground. As he drove up on the same, the scene he became aware that he was looking at an aircraft of some kind. It wasn't like anything I'd ever seen before. He told me during a telephone interview less than a week later. It was sort of flattened out oval and was more rounded on top and flatter on the bottom. I guess it would have been about 100 feet long, maybe 35 to 40 feet wide, 15 feet tall at its thickest point. It was parallel with the highway, and maybe 50 feet or so off the right side, which would be east. It was the dark gray in color and had no markings of windows that I could see. There was a man and a woman in the car staring up at it through the windshield, and they didn't even glance over at me as I drove by. I was probably down 10 to 15 miles per hour at that point. When I asked Chad why he didn't get a better stop to get a better look at the craft, he did not hesitate before saying, I was afraid to. I've heard people talk about the fear of the unknown all my life, and I can tell you now that it is definitely very real. I was curious, of course, that is why I slowed down so much, but I couldn't convince myself to actually stop. It was just too out of the ordinary. There was also a very strong sense that there was somebody or something staring back at me. Even though I didn't see any sign of a window on the craft, I didn't hear any sound either, but I did. I had the windows all rolled up. Still, you would have thought that I would have heard something from a craft that big and that close. I even looked at my dashboard clock thinking about missing time. But it was just about that time that it should have been. The strangest, most fascinating aspect of the encounter was how it ended. I had gotten far enough past the craft to see it in the mirror. He explained that suddenly there was a bright flash of bluish white light that lit up the whole area and it was gone. I didn't see it go anywhere. It just wasn't there anymore. Very interesting. Next, Washington, D.C., live television. Here we have a sighting over the Capitol building. Thanks to Educating Humanity Reader for sending this shot of UFOs over the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. There we go. All we have are the images, but we do see where they are from, and very interesting. And here we have uh, multiple UFOs over Taylor's Hill, Australia. New amazing footage of seven UFO lights recorded in the sky above Taylor's Hill, Australia, October 24th. Four UFOs join a separate group of UFOs to form a group of seven in close formation. Witnessed within 200 meters of my house in Taylor's Hill, Australia. Four minutes, 35 seconds of the video.
there are objects in question. We see a whole grouping of them right here. It's what we're looking for. Okay, well, there's a whole bunch more coming in. That's a good grouping of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. All right, then we move on. One last story here. Alleged UFO photographed at Rosaria del Tala, Argentina. Amateur photographer captures a strange object in the skies over Plaza Libertad in the community of Entre Rios province. The strange object can be seen in the image captured this afternoon at Plaza Libertad de in Rosario de Tala. Some believe it may be a UFO. Journalist Ivan Rodriguez, a native of Rosario de Tala and a fan of photography for some years, took some photos of the Libertad Gardens in the locality while he was truly surprised when he downloaded the image to his computer. Rodriguez told Radio Medirinha about his surprise when one of his daughters, who was watching the images on the computer, noticed a spot on one of them and asked him about it. I thought it might be a debris or a bug on the camera lens. I took it apart and there was nothing he said. These images were sent to the Museo OVNI in Victoria to be analyzed with better technology and to find out if this could truly be an unidentified flying object. All right, there you go. That's our UFO news for today. I'll be right back. We'll continue on. Stay tuned. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with peace. continue on. We are on Tuesdays doing the Book of Enoch. Book of Enoch, we're almost through the end of it. We're at chapter C, so you can see how much more we have to go. This section here, these two, and that one. And that's it. Okay, so, chapter C. And in those days, in one place, the fathers together with their sons shall be smitten, and brothers with one another shall fall in death, till the streams flow with their blood. For man shall not withhold his hand from slaying his sons and his sons' sons, and the sinner shall not withhold his hand from his honored brother from dawn till sunset, sunset they shall slay one another, and the horse shall walk up to the breast in the blood of sinners and the chariot shall be submerged to its height, and in those days the angels shall descend into the secret places, and gather together into one place all those that brought down sin, and the Most High will arise on that day of judgment, to execute great judgment among sinners. And over all the righteous and the holy he will appoint guardians from among the holy angels to guard them as the apple of the eye, until he makes an end of the wickedness of all sin. And all the righteous sleep a long sleep, they have not to fear and then the children of the earth shall see the wise in security and shall understand all the words of this book and recognize that their riches shall not be able to save them in the overthrow of their sins woe to you sinners in that day of strong anguish ye who afflict the righteous shall burn and burn them with fire ye shall be requited according to your works woe to you ye obstinate of heart who watch in order to devise wickedness Therefore shall fear come upon you, and shall ye be none to help you. 
Woe to you, ye sinners, on account of the words of your mouth, and on account of the deeds of your hand, which your godlessness has wrought. In blazing flames, burning worse than fire, shall ye burn. And now ye know that ye from the angels he will acquire as to your deeds in heaven, from the sun and from the moon, and from the stars in reference to your sins. Because upon the earth ye execute judgment on the righteous, and he will summon to testify against you every cloud and mist and dew and rain, for they shall all be withheld because of you from descending upon you, and they shall be mindful of your sins. And now give presents to the rain, that it not be withheld from descending upon you, nor yet the dew, when it has received gold and silver from you, that it may descend, when the hoar frost and the s and snow with their chillness, and all the snowstorms with their plagues fall upon you in those days, ye shall not be able to stand before them. Observe the heaven, O children of heaven, and every work of the Most High, and fear ye him, and work no evil in his presence. If he closes the window of heaven, and withholds the rain and the dew from descending on the earth of your account, what will ye do then? And if he sends his anger upon you because of your deeds, ye cannot petition him, for ye spake proud and insolent words against his righteousness, therefore ye shall have no peace. And see ye not the sailors of the ships, how their ships are tossed to and fro by the waves, and shaken by the winds, and are in some sore trouble? And therefore do not fear, because all their godly positions go upon the earth with them, and they have evil forebodings of hearts, that the sea will swallow them when they perish with therein. And not the entire sea, nor all of its waters, and all of its movements with the works of the Most High, and has he not set limits to his doings, and confined it through to the sand? And in his reproof it is afraid and dries up, and all the fish die, and all that is in it. But ye sinners, and all that are on the earth, fear not him. Fear him not. Has he not made the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein? Who has given understanding and wisdom to everything that moves on the earth and in the sea? Did not the sailors of the ships fear the sea? Yet sinners fear not the Most High. And in those days when he hath brought a gr grievous fire upon you, Whither will ye flee, and where will ye find deliverance? And when he launches forth his word against you, will ye not be afraid, frightened, and fear? And all the human areas shall be affrighted with great fear, and the earth shall be affrighted, and tremble, and be alarmed. And all the angels shall execute their commands, and shall seek to hide themselves from the presence of the great glory. And the children of the earth shall tremble and quake, and ye sinners shall be cursed forever, and ye shall have no peace. Fear ye not, ye souls of the righteous, and be hopeful, ye that have died in righteousness, and grieve not if your soul into Sheol has descended in grief, and that in your life your body fared not according to your goodness. But wait for the day of the judgment of sinners, and for the day of cursing and chastisement. And when, and yet when ye die, the sinners speak over you. As we die, so do the righteous, and, the ben and what benefit do they reap? for their deeds. Behold, even as we, so do we die in grief and darkness. And what have we, what have they more than we? From henceforth we are equal. And what will they receive, then what will they see forever? Behold, they too have died. And henceforth forever they shall see no light. I tell you, ye sinners, ye are content to eat and drink and rob and sin and strip men naked and acquire wealth and see good days. Have ye seen the righteous, how their end falls out, that no manner of violence is found in them till their death? Nevertheless they perished, and became as though they had not been, and their spirits descended into Sheol in tribulation. Now therefore I swear unto you, the righteous, by the glory of the great and honored, and the mighty one in dominion, and by my greatness I swear to you, I know a mystery, and have read the ta heavenly tablets, and have seen the holy books, and have found written them, and inscribed regarding them, that all goodness and joy and glory are prepared for them, and written down for the spirits of those who have died in righteousness, and the manifold good shall be given to you in a recompense for your labors, and for your lot is abundantly beyond the lot of the living. 
and the spirits of you who have died in righteousness shall live and rejoice, and their spirit shall not perish, nor their memorial from their from before the face of the Great One, unto all the generations of the world, wherefore no longer fear their con contumely. Woe to you, ye sinners, when you have died, if ye die in the wealth of your sins, and those who are like you regarding you, blessed are the sinners they have seen all the days, and how they have died in prosperity and in wealth, and have not seen tribulation or murder in their life, and they have died in honor and judgment, and has and judgment has not been executed on them during their life. Know ye that their souls will be made into descendants Sheol, and they shall be wretched in the great tribulation and into darkness and chains and burning flame where there is a grievous judgment shall your spirits enter and the great judgment shall be for all the generations of the world woe to you for ye shall have no peace say not in regard to the righteous and the good who are in life in our troubled days we are toiled laboriously and have experienced every trouble and met with much evil and have been consumed and have become few and our spirits small and we have been destroyed and have not found any help us even with a word we have been tortured and destroyed and not hope to lift see life from day to day we hope to be the head and have become the tail we have toiled laboriously and have no satisfaction in our toil we have become the food of our sinners and the righteous and they have laid their yoke heavily upon us they have the dominion over us that hated us and smote us and to those that hated us we have bowed our necks but they pitied us not we desired to get away from that which they might escape and be at rest but found no place whereunto we should flee and be safe from them and they complained to the rulers of the tribulation and cried out against those who devour us and they did not attend to our cries and they would not hearken to our voice and they held those who robbed us and devoured us and those who made us few and they concealed their oppression and they did not remove us from the yoke of those that they devoured us and dispersed us and murdered us and they concealed their murder and remembered not that they had lifted up their hands against us i swear unto you that in heaven the angels remember you for the good and the glory of the great one and the names are written before the glory of the great one be hopeful, for for a time ye were put to shame through ill and affliction, but now ye shall shine all the lights of heaven, ye shall shine and ye shall be seen, and all the portals of heaven shall be open to you, and in your cry, cry for judgment, and it shall appear for you, for in your tribulation, for all your tribulation shall be visited on the rulers and all who help those who plundered you. Be hopeful and cast not away your hopes. For ye shall have great joy as the angels of heaven, and ye shall be obliged to do. What shall ye be obliged to do? Ye shall not have to hide in the day of the great judgment, and ye shall not be found as sinners, and the eternal judgment shall be far from all of you for the generations of the world. And now fear not, ye righteous, when ye see the sinners growing strong and prospering in their ways. Be not companions with them, but keep afar from them, from their violence. For ye shall be companions of the host of heaven. And although ye sinners say, All our sins shall not be searched out and be written down, nevertheless, they shall write down all your sins every day. And now I show you that the light and the darkness, the day and the night, see all your sins. Be not godless in your hearts, and lie not, and alter not the words of uprightness, nor charge with lying the words of the great Holy One, nor take account of your idols. For all your lying and your godlessness issue not in righteousness, but in great sin. And now I know the mystery that sinners will alter and pervert the word of righteousness in many ways, and will speak wicked words and lie and practice great deceits, and write books concerning their words. But when they write it down truthfully all my words in their languages, and do not change or mimish aught from the words, but write them all down truthfully, all that I first testified concerning them, then I know another mystery, that books will be given to the righteous and the wise to become the cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom. And to them shall the books be given, and they shall believe in them and rejoice over them. 
and then shall the righteous who have learned therefore in all the paths of uprightness be recompensed. And in those days the Lord bade them to summon and testify to the children of the earth concerning their wisdom. Show it unto them, for ye are their guides, and a recompense for the whole earth. For I and my son will be united with them forever in the paths of uprightness in their lives, and ye shall have peace. Rejoice, you children of righteousness. Amen. Fragment of the book of Noah. And after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant by him and bore a son, and his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose, and the hair of his head and of his long locks were white as wool, and his eyes beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright. And thereupon he rose in the ha hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of Righteousness. And his father Lamech was afraid of him, and fled, and came to his father Methuselah. And he said unto him, I have begotten a strange son, diverse from an unlike man, and resembling the sons of the gods of heaven. The God of heaven and his nature is different, and he is not like us. And his eyes are the rays of the sun, and his countenance is glorious. But it seems to me that he is not sprung from me, but from the angels. And I fear that in his days a wonder may be brought upon this earth. And now, my father, I am here to petition thee and implore thee that thou mayest go to Enoch, our father, and learn from the truth, for his dwelling place is among the angels. And when Methuselah heard the words of his son and came down, he came to me to the ends of the earth, for he had heard that I was there, and he cried aloud. And I heard his voice, and I came to him, and I said unto him, Behold, here I am, my son, wherefore hast thou come to me? And he answered and said, Because of great cause of anxiety have I come to thee, and because of a disturbing vision I have approached. And now, my father, hear me unto Lamech, my son, that there has been born a son, the like of whom there is none, and his nature is not like man's nature, and his color of his body is whiter than snow, and redder than the bloom of a rose. And the hair of his head is whiter than the white wool, and his eyes are like the rays of the sun. And he opened his eyes, and thereupon lighted the whole house. And he arose in the hands of the midwife, and opened his mouth, and blessed the Lord of heaven. And his father, Lamech, became afraid, and fled before me, and did not believe that this was sprung from him, but that there was in the likeness of angels of heaven. And behold, I have come to thee, that thou mayest make known to me the truth. And I, Enoch, answered, and I said unto him, The Lord will do a new thing to the earth. And this I have already seen in a vision, and make known to thee that in the generation of my father Jared some of the angels of heaven transgressed the word of the Lord, and behold, they commit a sin and transgress the law, and have united themselves with women to commit sin with them, and have married some of them, and have, be have begot children by them, and they shall produce on the earth giants not according to the spirit, but according to the flesh. And there shall be a great punishment on the earth, and the earth shall be cleansed from all its impurity. Yea, there shall come a great destruction over the whole earth, and there shall be a deluge and a great destruction for one year. And this son who had been born unto you shall be left on the earth, and his three children shall be saved with them. When all mankind around the earth shall die, he and his sons shall be saved. And now make known to thy son Lamech that he who has been born in truth is in truth his son, and call his name Noah, for he shall be left to you, and he and his sons shall be saved from the destruction which shall come over the earth on account of all the sin and the unrighteousness shall what which shall be consummated on the day in his day, earth in his days, and after all there shall be still more unrighteousness than that which was first consummated on the earth, for I know the mysteries of the holy ones, for he the Lord has showed me and informed me, and I have read them in the heavenly tablets. And I saw written on them that generation upon generation shall transgress, till the generation of righteousness arises, and transgression is destroyed, and sin passes away from the earth, and all manner of good comes upon it. And now, my son, go and make known to thy son Lamech that his son, which has been born, is in truth, is in truth his son. 
and that this is no lie. And then Methuselah had heard the words of the father Enoch, for he had shown to him everything in secret, and returned and showed them to him, and called them that son Noah, for he will be the comfort of the earth after all the destruction. Another book which Enoch wrote for his son Methuselah and those who will come after him and keep the law is the last days. Ye who have done good shall wait for those days till the end is made of those who work evil and an end of the might of the transgressors. And wait to ye, wait ye indeed till sin has passed away, for their name shall be blotted out of the book of life and out of the holy books, and their seed shall be destroyed for ever, and their spirits shall be slain. And they shall cry and make lamentation in the place that is the chosen wilderness, in a chaotic wilderness, and in the fire shall they burn, for there is no earth there. And I saw there something like an invisible cloud, for by reason of its depth I could not look over, and I saw a flame of fire burning, blazing brightly, and things like shining mountains circling and sweeping to and fro. And I asked one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto him, what is this shining thing? For it is not heaven, but only the flame of a blazing fire, and the voice of weeping and crying, and lamentation and strong pain. And he said unto me, This place which thou seest, here are cast the spirits of sinners and blasphemers, and of those who work wickedness, and those who pervert everything that the Lord hath spoken through the mouth of the prophets, even the things that shall be. For some of them are written down and inscribed above in the heaven in the order that the angels may read them and know that which shall befall the sinners and the spirits of the humble and those that have afflicted their bodies and been recompensed by God and of those who have been put up in shame by wicked men who love God and love neither gold nor silver nor any of the good things which are in the world but gave over their bodies to torture who since they came into being longed not after earthly food, but regard to them as a passing breath, and lived accordingly. And the Lord tried them much, and their spirits were found pure, so that they should bless his name. And all the blessings destined for them I have recounted in the books, and he hath assigned them their recompense, because they have been found to be such as loved heaven more in their life than in the world. And though they were trodden under foot of wicked men, and experienced abuse and reviling from them, and were put to shame, yet they blessed me. And now I will summon the spirits of the good who belong to the generation of light, and I will transform those who were born in darkness, who in flesh were not recompensed with such an honor as their faithfulness deserved. And I will bring forth in shining light those who have loved my holy name, and I will seat each on the throne of his honor, and they shall be resplendent for the times without number, for righteousness is the judgment of God, for to the faithful he will, will give faithfulness in the habitation of upright paths. And they shall see those who were born in darkness led into darkness, while the righteous shall be resplendent. And the sinner shall cry aloud and see them resplendent. And they indeed will go where days and seasons are pres prescribed for them. And that is the completion of the book of Enoch. We have made it. Yay! Good book, huh? Good book. The promise of the book over and over. The wicked and the godless are going to be removed. Over and over and over again it repeats it, doesn't it? Many, many times. So, I think we can understand that that's something important. So, when we hear the story about what's going on, and if we aren't hearing the story about wicked and ungodly, or the godless being removed, then we know that something is not quite right because we know what this book the book of revelation kind of saying the same things all right moving on in 5d article here called effortless meditation peter russell you may be surprised to hear that meditation should be effortless that no striving or concentration is needed i know i was when i first became interested in meditation back in the mid sixties i was repeatedly told that it took a great mental discipline and many years of practice indian teachers had likened the mind to a wagon load of restless monkeys that needed to be tied down and kept quiet and my experience affirmed appeared to confirm it my mind was full of thoughts and try as i may i could not keep them at bay 
Like many others, I naturally assumed that I was not trying hard enough. I needed greater mes mental discipline, not less. Then I changed upon transcendental meditation. Its teacher, the Maharashi of Beatles fame, challenged the whole notion of trying to control the mind. The monkeys, he pointed out, were wanting something more bananas, perhaps. Give them what they want, and they will settle down according to their own accord. So with the mind, it is restless because we are seeking something. And what is it that we are seeking? In the final analysis, we all want to feel better and be happier, more at peace, more at ease, fulfilled, content. He argued that we give the mind a taste of the inner contentment it is looking for. It will be attracted to and begin to settle down of its own accord. This made more sense to me than I, than when I came across so far, so I learned this practice and it worked. I found my mind becoming quiet without any effort. Indeed, as soon as I inadvertently started trying to control the process in the hope that I could somehow help my meditation along, it did not work so well. Now, I'm not suggesting that this applies to every type of meditation. Techniques designed to cultivate particular mental skills or states of mind may well involve a degree of concentration or mental discipline. But when it comes to the basic skill of relaxing into a quiet state of mind, effort generally turns out to be counterproductive. A quiet mind is not a state of mind to be achieved. It is a state of experience where there is nothing to be achieved. It is the mind in its natural condition, untarnished by fears and desires and the thoughts they create. When everything is okay in our world, we feel okay inside. We are at ease. Or rather, that is the way it should be. Yet even when all our physical needs are met, there is no immediate danger or threat. We seldom feel totally at ease. More often than not, the very opposite. Leave us nothing to do, and most of us start getting bored. If something upsets us, we may hold a grievance days, weeks, or even years later. Or we may sp spend hours worrying about situations that occur, but seldom do. Along such feelings come the almost endless procession of thoughts, most of them boil down to worries about how we can be more content. Yet, ironically, a worried mind is, by definition, discontent. This is the sad joke about human beings. We are so busy worrying about whether or not we are going to be at peace in the future, we don't give ourselves a chance to be at peace in the present. Given how easily such thoughts spring up, it is easy to assume that they must be subdued and controlled, but the approach stems from the same belief that created them, the belief that we need to be in control of things in order to feel at ease. Thus, the advice that occurs repeatedly in a variety of meditation traditions is, when you realize that you've been caught in a thought, accept the fact. Don't judge or blame yourself. It happens, even to the most experienced meditators. Two, instead of following the thought as you might in normal life, gently shift your attention back to some experience in the present moment. In transcendental meditation, that may be the thought of a mantra. In mindfulness, the sensation of the breath or the practice is perhaps a visual image or feeling of love. Let the attention rest in that experience don't try to concentrate or hold it there ah yes you'll be sure to wander off again but the practice is not so much learning how to stay present but how to return to the present if you wander off a hundred times there is a hundred opportunities to practice gently returning your attention to the present even then trying an effort can arise in subtle ways maybe if i just added this or focused on that it would be easier some of it is so subtle that we don't even notice we are doing it. A faint resistance to an experience, perhaps. Even a slight wanting to have a good meditation can get in the way. Over my 40 years of teaching meditation, I have found the greatest challenge for students is to let go of all effort. They can't quite believe that they really do not need to try at all. Sometimes even the most experienced meditators with years of practice may still put a slight effort or control into their practices. Once they let go completely, they begin to appreciate how effortless it can be and find themselves dropping even more easily into a state of inner silence. Recently, I've been exploring ways to weed out and dissolve even the subtlest levels of wanting, effort, and expectation in meditation. Encouraged by the enthusiastic responses these new approaches have received from both complete beginners and people with many years of practices, I am now making them widely available here online. And we've got a link here that will take you to some of this source information. 
Alright, so links there so you can check it out. And that brings us to our channeled message for today. And today, channeled message comes to us from Morpheus. So let's get to it and see what Morpheus has to say. I don't think this is the same Morpheus from The Matrix. Just in case you're wondering. Here we go. Could be though, I'm not sure. Morpheus. By Robert Measure, October 27, 2014. Morpheus. Greetings again, and again I bring forth the ambience of harmonious love and vitality. I would like to talk to you today about alchemy, and the manifestational coordination of nature's conduct. When you are harmonized with the cosmic system of nature, you are one with your God Self. Nature is the ultimate alchemist and works through you as you to bring forth the quantum leaps and ebbs of cosmological, planetary and solar evolution. From the focal point of your spiritual practice, the ethereal coordination of nature harness your microcosmic vehicle in ways innumerable. Ultimately the energy packets of integrative light codes are downloaded into the microcosm and disseminated through the photons of your microcosm corresponding with the cosmic ether. Nature regulates the streams of cosmic energy throughout the planetary inhabitants. Nature, as reflected through all being conducts and regulates itself through the elements. In order for you to integrate and work with these cosmic streams balance and synchronization of the elements within your own being is required. As you balance and each aspect of being is harmonized enhancement of the psychic centers is resulted, expanding the capacity and velocity of streaming, this allows the microcosm to actively utilize these streams. The active dimensions of light are a lot more aggressive to work with than the passive. That being said, your bodies need to be able to work diligently and cooperatively with these energies. Nature knows what she's doing, she will not use you if the energies are going to overpower and bewilder you. Allow her to work through you, for she is the alchemist the evolutionary apparatus and much more. These energies are amplified cosmic ether streams. The cosmic ether is a crude form of spirit, whereas spirit is refined within the microcosm due to the alchemy of its procedure. The cosmos is social by nature, the interplay between dimensions, the streaming between consciousness, emotion, mind, and the various bodies, the social paradigm of human beings interacting all denote this truth. This social consensus gives rise to collective assimilation resulting in productive evaluation and processes, which are necessary for evolution. The cosmos is evolving through the microcosms, and the microcosms are evolving through the macrocosm. The properties of your microcosmic unit are in tandem with the cosmic channels of dimensional interplay. In the same way the microcosmic subsystems of your physical, spiritual and mental bodies are in a unison of response. Chemical affinity is a quantum expression of consciousness conducting itself in spatial realms of experience, infinitesimal quarks spin harmonizing through vibratory resonance. Consciousness harnesses the physical body through cosmic ether which interpenetrates corporeality through photonic emission of neuronal conveyance. The nucleus of a cell is in tandem with the bioneurological photonic regulation of the brain's anatomic orchestration. Soul or consciousness exists in its own layer of voidless space, it is negative in its essence as it assimilates the intelligence of planes it experiences. As it assimilates through its magnetism it also emits sending its energy packets of intelligence to the bodies and minds its harnessing, rendering it positive within different levels of the cosmos. Just as the physical body is a vehicle harnessed and conducted by soul on a physical plane of expression, so is the astral body. Consciousness harnesses astral energy and projects a body through the emitted energy packets. Each planet has a sphere of astral energy to harness and a physical plane of causation. The soul needs to be willed by the microcosm to harness and conduct different energies. The microcosm acts as the middle man directing consciousness through will and integrity. Every cell vibrates and harmonizes with the mind and spirit aspect originated and formed by the soul. Understanding that the soul is the psyche and is responsible for memory storage, and directs spirit really shines light on the psychological nature of self-transmutation. Formal agreements between the dimensions form intelligences by way of social reform, consciousness receiving streams and crystallizing it into intelligence, that in turn affects the new sphere. 
the infrastructure of the cosmos in relation to interdimensional vibratory harmony is leveled and coalesced, regulating and performing in a unison of response. By means of symmetry, velocity and rhythmic production energy streams from one dimension to another. Mental, physical, spiritual and astral compound is produced by the synthesis of dimensional interplay. The planetary, solar, galactic and universal grids are rally points of dimensional social interpenetration. Light exists outside the quadrants of orbital space and is streamed through the universe by stellar gravitation and emission. The meta-framework of cosmic interface finds its way through evolution by the will of receptive and active microcosms. The metagalactic core or central sun is the purest form of consciousness and as it is transmitted through the universe it refracts into diversity and differentiated capacity and potentiality. In the up-and-coming waypoints of evolution, cosmic rays and galactic beams will be instituted in the next quantum leaps experienced. The cosmic rays are energetic friction. The interweaving of differential energy forms instigate hyperelectric convulsions. Lower frequency light forms when exposed to higher frequencies light streams are subjected to friction. This friction can result in a cosmic fire and the transfiguration of the exposed subject. Transmutation is the prerequisite to anchoring the higher light for transfiguration. Waveform reaction is the interaction of similar vibratory energies, which is the apparatus of transmutation, the alchemy of microcosm preparing itself for the integration of higher light. Spiritual initiations are the cosmic rays. They find themselves numerically assessed as they are an aggregation of differentiated light streams. Light bestows revelation, as consciousness reacts to light, consciousness then assimilates the light and by way of social reform the microcosm is transformed. Until next time, beloved light bearers. Morpheus Alright, good message from Morpheus, thank you very much. Brings us to our meditation for today, so close your eyes, take a deep breath, and exhale. Take another deep breath, exhale again. And another deep breath, and as you do, contemplate the words of today's affirmation, life is good. And just hold that thought in your mind's eye that life is good and imagine yourself walking through life and experience the goodness of life. Imagine that no matter where you go, no matter what the situation is, you can always look deeper into the situation and find goodness. For we learn that the badness is an illusion and we look beyond it to find what is truly there. Think of the words, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things will be given. And look for that piece of heaven in whatever you are doing. Seek, and ye shall find. So let's imagine as we go through the world today that we look and find the kingdom of heaven in all places and let us make it our simple effort just simply to seek out this kingdom of heaven today it exists within each one of us so let's imagine as we look inside we can see and experience and feel and as we become more aware of its presence the more we become in synchronicity with its qualities just imagine yourself walking along the path sending out love and light into the world imagine yourself walking the path of righteousness and just let that be enough for today so let the subconscious mind continue on the journey a journey of light and love, just sending out light and love to everyone to meet. And let's bring the conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. 
happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. And yet again, that's it, my friends, for today. Thank you very much for being here. Go out. Enjoy the world today. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. It's all around. It's everywhere we go. All we have to do is pay attention. I'll be back tomorrow. I love you. Keep loving each other. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.